Hey, how's it going? This is uh, your host DJ Skyotech. I know I haven't made a, a videos in the recent recently, or it's been a, a long while. But I'm going back and delving into the past. And this tutorial, I'm including two tutorials and two discussions. Well, I'm going back to the snare drum creation because I feel like I didn't go into much detail because there there's so much stuff you can do and. We're also going to compare the synthesizer from Cakewalk from uh, Project 5 version 2.0. Well, this is 2.5 update. Uh, we're going to compare this subtractive, subtractive synthesizer with the one from uh, Reason, which is Subtractor. And I'm going to discuss, from my point of view, from the for me as a user and using it daily, using both sequencers, and the feedback that I'm giving on both, it either be good or bad, but I'm going to keep it positive and I would just discuss the only things that I wish the other one had and vice versa so right now we're gonna start off uh, we're gonna before we create the drum patch we're gonna close this and we're gonna start off with a empty empty patch so we'll open up right here sign 2 and if during the video of the session if somehow the sound doesn't get triggered is because Sometimes they will lock lock me out in the MIDI, so we just come over here and override the MIDI engine. So we'll go over here, initialize the patch, and we'll we'll start off with with the slope section. This area, as you see here, this is what I don't really see in a uh, in subtractor. These these slopes right here. Maybe in the Maelstrom and in the Thor synthesizer, they have those to a certain extent. But these slopes right here are very uh, mandatory in, in producing an exquisite, righteous uh, snare drum. So this is the most important part and why I really love using this synthesizer here, right? Because of these slopes right here, these slopes right here. And we'll start off with a triangle wave and we'll put it in a band pass. And we'll bring down the sustain, we'll bring down the slope section and we'll bring up the decay at halfway and well for this sake so to, to today's tutorial we'll leave key tracking on even though I, I suggest you take this up but if you're a beginner to using any synthesizer I, I say leave it in key tracking although you're supposed to take this off so that you won't vary the pitch right but for the new guys and the guys barely coming into the scene of sound design I, I'll give you the advice is just leave this on but once you master the the true creation of a drum synthesis, whether it be a simba, a hi-hat, a close hat a conga, tambourine, shaker, general midi, if you're, if you're that good to, to, to be able to emulate those with just through synthesis, and then I would say start off like this. Because we'll start off in the key of C. See? And then with this on, it should get brighter. Well, actually, I was wrong. In this, in this particular reason it actually kept it in the low tone because that is a zero octave I meant to say this was the reverse of that so that's one mistake I made right but we'll leave key tracking on for this tutorial and we'll just go up to octave several we'll, we'll start with my infamous three and four formula and this we could derive any any instrument or any drum patch so now we should trigger the, the, the key and as you hear that We'll give it amplitude to two saturation. So now you can hear much better, right? So now the first thing you want to do is you want to come to the attack portion. We're not even gonna mess with that, but we'll go with the decay parameter. And here you could change the decay slope from these different little slopes, right? This will will ring it out because you, you and, the, and this is linear, but then you also have concave and convex. We'll start off with this one right here. With this slope right here. Which is convex, if I'm not mistaken. And now you hear the drum tone. Right? So now let's bring it down a little bit, make it shorter. Increase the resonance. And then we'll add the second edition of a, a true white noise isolator. Well, Increase the volume of, of the isolator one, which is a triangle wave at a three octave. And this right here really doesn't matter because 
the white noise is static it's always gonna be the same pitch it's not gonna move at all that's what I noticed so so this wouldn't really matter but I would go into the four with the other isolators like the sine wave the triangle wave the square side to up side to down it would uh it will show its interest then then you could really tell that the pitch is varying see so now we get the infamous snare drum but that's not it that's just a shortcut that's because why we have these slopes right here we have these right here I didn't even go into the release section but we have this important slope right here at the decay part of the timber which is what you have to do to get this drum tone to sound ideal but most people will keep it like that and say yes yes this is a good drum tone and they would just put it in mono but the true sound designer will go even deeper into the into the synthesis of the snare drum because there's so many possibilities and so many genres and styles but I'm going to show you the blueprint always keep the decay parameter short and use this slope right here either a concave or a convex but this is a convex if I'm not mistaken and then you got the delay section that's for other in other instrumentation and other drum tones but today's discussion is the snare drum tone so I said if we can preview the, 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 the timbre we could hear that it's and then if we go down the octave to C2 it should, it should vary this one right here you'll hear it in the lower tone see but now we have to manipulate the amplitude and the volume and we're at the amplitude slope right so now you would have to go and start focusing on learning to use your envelope generators and I like sign 2 because it has all these these extra EG's and, and even these LFO's over here too well, this was, was awesome but we're not using LFO's in this discussion and let me pause that TV or lower the volume if, <clears throat> if I'm paused Okay, I apologize about that. Anyways, let's go forth with the tutorial. There's two tutorials in, in one, and we're squeezing it in into hopefully a one or two segment long two hour video. And we might just truncate the video and make it a little bit shorter. So let's go back to this. Um, now we'll go, we'll, we'll always we'll focus on going into envelope generators because we have to tame as the sound is being triggered. We already discussed the most important part, the attack part, or the decay the part. There it is in the attack part in, in, in this tutorial. Well, maybe on a, the usage of a, of a second envelope generator being slightly pulled up ahead to vary the, the, the strike of the head, the amplitude. Because first you have to get the strike and then you have to get the, the rounded tone of the, of the drum tone. Where, where you give a little bit of resonance. And then you can also do velocity, either less or more. But right now we're going to keep it at, at, th at this pace right here. And we're going to move the panning to the left, increase the volume a little bit. We won't do compression just yet, right? So now let's go to envelope generator 1. And this is where I was going to also redo the, the decay parameter. So do it a little longer and then bring it down slowly. And adjust your need as you're, as you're striking the keyboard. And for this instance, we're going to lower the volume on level 2 level 2, isolator level 2, we're going to do it like only about 30% and this is important right here, this amount, the amount of the envelope generator from focusing on, on positive to negative modulation you could ac accomplish so many different tweaks and twists to the drum tone and the overall sound and the output of it until you get it perfect so it's going to take a while for this, for this, uh, for you to develop your, your own accurate drum tones. It's going to take some time because it took me a while to understand how to use envelope generators and what they do to the sound, the overall sound. So we'll go into the envelope generator of isolator 2 and I'll lower the psh, that. See, so we'll increase this and increase this right here. So it took away the static, the, the, the white, lovely static noise. See, now, now we're bringing it back. But we'll lower the, the decay parameter on the slope of a concave. 
and then we'll bring it up here right about there right so we'll give it we'll increase the volume to to manipulate this sound either make it go up or down but for our case we want to bring it down so we're gonna do that see now we hear more most of the, the triangle wave and the most important part that I forgot if your DAW has this which it should but for some reason the original stock factory version of project 5 it, it wouldn't let me use the uh, analyst it should be in here somewhere but no it's not because this is 64 bit so I'm not gonna have that at my disposal however I can use uh, the isotope and uh, isotope and open up the uh, what is it the main this one the whole the whole unit includes like all the mastering units in one plugin you open up the meter bridge and right here disregard this my meter card isn't up to, up to date because this is an old Dell 690 I just got to upgrade that that uh, the video card and from here we could prominently see that we have our data right here at the 300 but look at that noise that noise is carrying on all the way to all the way far here far here to the good uh, high end See? so this is what you need too this is to get a true accurate drum tone and we haven't even added the compression and the reverb to finalize the, the drum tone First we need to focus on this and you can always move the, the, cut, the cutout filter. See now we get that a traditional hard pounding snare drum. Off I'm just moving the slope of this. See? So we'll keep it at this one and we'll lower the volume. So we are going to add the, the compressor and the reverb. And you got to be really careful when you add the reverb. But before all that we let's go back to the envelope generators. Because we only added one. So of course you have two, three, four at your disposal. And then each one has two modulation options. And for this one we only use one. Heck, why not put resonance to give it a little bit more crispiness. A little bit of resonance ones. And we only have one filter enabled under, under a band pass filter. So that's the drum tone there. We have it at far left at the main stereo image. And then we could also move the left over here, but we're gonna keep it there. We only have one plugin showing us the and oh I'm sorry Cletus, I didn't mean to wake you up. My cast sitting next to the phone right here. But obviously you can't see him because I'm recording right now this tutorial. So yes, I love Isotope, even though this is outdated, this is probably to me one of the best complete plugins you can get to master your music it's very phenomenal very very powerful so now we'll go to envelope generator 2 so now we'll give it probably pitch so this is the secret to the, the snare drum with pitch right here you could delve into so many different types of snare drums from the techno snare drum to the trance snare drum to the hip-hop snare drum to the drum and bass snare drum to the infamous uh, synthetic tech house the one that create the one that involves a lot of distortion and a lot of uh, compression, but yet yeah, all manipulated correctly. Because when it comes to drum tones, they have to be at the right frequency and the correct slopes and the correct decay parameters. If not, they're not going to sound professional. You're going to be sounding like crap. So you got to keep that in mind. Me, I always bring down the amount of the envelope generator, and I will usually start off with the decay. And here now, yes, I will give it a, a small delay on the attack portion, and then I go into my slope right here from linear I think to uh actually I think this is yeah that that was linear linear and con and instead of concave I go to convex on the attack portion and then I go to level and envelope generator one to only treat this second envelope generator to go and do the pitch and the amplitude on this one or just the volume because it's gonna give me that option of level one isolator one and we'll go to pitch And from there, we'll lower this down a little bit. And then we always have to bring this down to the slope because it's not the correct slope. It's gonna, we don't want it, <clears throat> we don't want it to ring out for this one. This one will make it ring out. But of course we don't have the release enabled so it wouldn't really matter too much. 
but still we we want to we don't want the linear we want the convex convex on the decay parameter and now this is on it should have a, a new twist but it's not gonna be much because we have it here so we start getting results in, when we're like right here at negative modulation to positive modulation of course I didn't even have my modulation at all it's at zero so that's really my ignorance but let's go move the level one at 50% pitch all the way up see so now it dramatically Manipulated the, the plus three octave and it made it more more pitchy. So what I would do then, I could you can either go to unison and detune back here. This has like a main master uh, detuner, so that's cool. But for this tutorial, we're gonna go down. And we're gonna detune here a little bit, hardly anything. See, so now we're getting that that feel that the the drum tone sounding more professional. If you go right here, I don't think you're going to hear much on that first isolator because it's at 3.7. Right here you will hear you will hear the negative modulation. See? This, this is high amplitude modulation, positive modulation. Of course we could mess with this right here. This addresses the most of the drum tones. The way the envelope generator starts. If you go far right, it's pitchy. If you go down, you get bassy. So I mean this has more more uh, in-depth knowledge but maybe you should read the manual to, to your dog because I started with project 5 version 2.0 right now I'm moving I mean I study a lot so I guess I'll give you an, in, an insight see you can look into this book it's a great book by Simon Can and he goes into that I have this for also for Cubis and what else the reason too I have the reason one but that one's outdated Sometimes I don't really use my books, but I like going and reading about the authors because sometimes they're a little bit, they have really good knowledge or they have more expertise. And the one, and that guy's from the United Kingdom, so he obviously they're always doing stuff correct over there. That's what I've noticed from watching stuff online. Uh, we're getting our ass kicked by the United, United Kingdom population or the, the people from over there. They seem to be doing things correct, whether it be producers or is sound designers not all of them but some a good amount of them are doing stuff right and I had just been keep, keeping behind because I didn't have right now only reason I'm doing this video is because my phone is actually updated and I have this nice little tripod that's holding it in place where I'm able to move with, with both of my hands and give the tutorial and I even turn on my speaker so you can hear the, the drum tone see but if, yet if we had it if we took away key tracking we will, we will get the same sound might not be that desirable, but look. See? So now all we have to do now is just go down. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep key tracking on. Because we're, we're giving this to the, to the, to the newcomer, that, the new uh, beginner, the new producer that's coming in into the scene. That's coming into the scene and he wants to uh, learn drum synthesis. So I went back right now because now I'm wearing my glasses. I'm able to see all my fine detail and I'm giving this discussion so the, the snare drum consists of a triangle wave and some noise the noise is being manipulated and we're not even using the different uh, technologies that we have for this synthesizer because it gives you the option of synchronizing your, your isolators or well, actually it gives you ring modulation first and then it goes into synchronized mode cinch and you got linear FM and you have exponential FM which in this side of the in this side of the synthesis, uh, this side of this spectrum, there's a lot of uh, good insights and techniques. When whenever you discover what this does and what the one previous to that was, which is linear frequency modulation, and you have exponential uh, frequency modulation. But of course, in order for this to work in tandem, you had to add another. Uh, change this from the noise to a uh, either a sign or the other ones uh, uh, so, side to both, side to down, triangle wave, square wave because then you can really you put that that mode of course subtractor also has that but when we do the subtractor uh, tutorial we would talk about that in that specific domain of, of reason 
So this this is to me so far it looks like it is gonna be a long, interesting two hour, two video, two separate long videos all into one advanced tutorial to make the drum tone and discuss the synthesis behind this beautiful drum tone. Of course, we didn't even bring we didn't even bring the the plugins yet. So this this is really what I use at the most right now. I make I made a lot of uh I made a lot of drum tones using this synthesizer like a lot. I'm a little behind. Excuse me. I should have more, but I'm happy right now cuz I'm giving I'm going back into history, but I'm also going into the correct high detail of talking about the slope section. This is so important. I can't stress that enough. can't stress it enough right how imperative it is so now we don't get that we, we're not getting that same drum tone because we put it in exponential FM but we haven't uh, manipulated this right here this has to be manipulated too to get that to get this going and then modulating the frequency you know there's more and more to it but I'm not gonna go into that we're gonna go return to normal operation mode it goes the snare drum at the key of C. And what I like about right here, we'll go right here, we're right here, and it should be C3. But see, you can see it right there. I'm pressing C3 with my with my left hand. But since we have a key, uh, we have enabled key tracking, we're gonna get the, and I'm gonna go to the next C, which is C4. See? Whenever you do get the drum tone correct and professionally sounding, you can also cheat because once you have only to a certain extent, like the two and the three, you could get away with it because then it will, you, you, you could actually resample that and it will sound awesome. You could even put that in an MPC sampler once you do have it done. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to say that uh, it's sounding pretty good. We're a little bit happy. Did we reduce? Did we lower the octave down a little bit? And we have a sub isolator, but we're not messing with this. Like I said, on the second isolator, I don't think there's much you can do there besides just manipulating the the white noise with envelope generators and LFOs and making it either being filtered or being slowly triggered and decayed to cut it out uh, at intervals according to how you have your LFO set there isn't much you can do to, to vary the, the pitch on the, on the white noise it's always going to remain static only and if only then if you remove this and you start bringing in these other isolators yeah you will get manipulation at the at its best according to the synthesizer unless if you use like a special synthesizer like I won't call it special like Maelstrom then it, it it does manipulate the the grain. It, it manipulates this. It makes it it makes it go up and down the, in pitch, which is pretty awesome. Also, like in the grain sampler in region ten and then higher. So uh, we'll keep it as that. And we'll, we'll manipulate the. You could also put another envelope generator. And this one, yeah. Now this guy, you can manipulate. Give it a small delay, a small attack portion, and make sure you break, change your slope. Then go to your decay parameter. This one will be a little fairly longer, and this one will ring out. But we didn't bring the release up here at all. And then we'll start off right here, and then we'll bring a filter to manipulate that filter. See, so right there you manipulated it correct, like not correctly, but we got we don't want it to sound like that. Although it sounds pretty cool. We're at C3. But we also gotta increase the amount of the envelope generator. See? So we start manipulating. We start manipulating what we're modulating. We're modulating the cutoff filter of band pass. We want it to go to the left or to the right. But if we want it to go to the left, we'll use an LFO. But we're not going to use MFO for the drum, for the creation of the snare drum. We're going to keep it all envelope generator. So we'll bring down the decay a little bit. That's a little bit too much. 
I'm gonna bring out the uh, envelope amount. Just bring it down a little bit to keep it analog sounding. So it just it could just barely delve into twisting it a little bit as we're modulating it with the envelope generator according to how we have this set right here. And of course, moving this parameter here. See, that's another thing too. You got to keep in mind how you're using your synthesizer because you've got the option to go to add three and four, but these are not enabled. And this is where you can make it like if you're stacking it, you can make it like you're making two snare drums in one because the other option would be if, if we were, if we had it sounding like how we want it to sound, let's bring it more ampli amplitude. Because then you can go to the amplitude section and right here is where I'm going to manipulate this area. In fact, I'm going to re release this all the way down and then I'm going to modulate, uh, I think I'm going to do level two. I think I already did. I don't think I did level two, not yet. Yeah, I did. That will go against what I'm teaching, but again, you can actually get a, a different feel for it. Or you can just do level all and see what, what occurs. So don't be scared to experiment. Of course, you always got to follow the principles and the guidelines of, of what's there and what the, what the uh, masters have already taught. And we'll do it at 75% and we'll see what it sounds like. So that's actually pretty promising right there. It's actually good that you experiment because you'll get these, these results. We'll give it more drive, more amplitude. Because as soon as I bring up the amount of the envelope generator on the main, on this is hardwired to the amplitude. So this is always going to be amplitude, the A, amplitude, amplitude, amp, envelope. So this is your main section according how to how this is designed. So you always got to reach your owner's manual. So you, you get the feel where, where I'm going with this and how expressive I have made the drum tone from static sounding to, to that. I apologize if I left my the fan on on the left hand side but I had to put it on because this room for some reason it's always really hot. And of course I do have this other setup over here, this monitor, but right now we're focusing on the main monitor right here. And I apologize. Maybe I should have zoomed in but right now I'm not going to do that because right now it's recording. We're at 27 minutes. And we still yet we still haven't even gone at full level at full expression. So once that's done, you know you can always manipulate. Let's let's go back to to what we're doing. When we increase this, it's gonna manipulate the the actual envelope generator. See now it got low. It should get a little higher now. Yep. See that's full blast. We'll bring it down a little bit. And. And this, for instance, now we could probably try to modulate the resonance. See if we get some different feel for it. That's too much right there. This won't get no, no, nothing to it because we don't have the sustain at all so now we should get something this is gonna sound completely contrary and it's gonna contradict the whole tutorial see you don't want that hey, I'm sorry little fella okay he kind of woke up that was very scary to him so you never want that you never use the sustain in the release never you always just focus on the decay parameter that's what's just to prove to you that you have to manipulate the decay parameter only And it sounded really good when all this was lowered down the main envelope generator yeah you see sounds more professional from here we just go down an octave on the main uh, triangle wave on first isolator and it should sound like that so we'll say from this moment on We'll lower the decay parameter a little bit. We're at 598 zero milliseconds. And we'll, we'll uh, increase the envelope generator of the amplitude of the main amp envelope to 80%. So 
you always got to remember <clears throat> how short you keep these because if you do it wrong you might you're, you're gonna start making hi-hats close hi-hats So we go back to three, even though we did orchestrate the, we removed the one octave and then we added a sub isolator, which I remember if it doesn't increase it, it goes down an octave, the sub isolator, it gets enabled, it decreases it by one octave or it goes one octave higher. <clears throat> but for this, for this obvious uh, implementation, we, we see it as it going down an octave, it's making those, those rumbly, nice bass lines. So now <clears throat> we'll go into adding compression and we'll go keep it all mutual with Project 5. We'll use the built-in plugins from Project 5, Compressor Gate, we'll add a reverb from Cakewalk or well, Project 5 which is right here. This is the main DAW we're using. We'll get the Studio Verb 2. At the end you could probably throw in a delay but that's just to your taste and to the suit that to what, what sound you're there after. We'll disable the studio verb because I know it's not set up correctly. It's gonna wash out the whole drum tone. But right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, manipulate the compressor. So it's, it might it might it uh, might cause distortion. It might get red up here. But for this tutorial, we're, we shouldn't really matter too much. See? I knew it was gonna give it a uh, it was gonna do distortion. So we'll lower it down to four. Three, three right there. And well, here's the main important part to the compression, the attack, and the, and the release parameters. See, so it only goes up to 4.00 and 0 0.50 on the attack, but we're going to keep a short attack at 7 or 8. The release, this, you can always experiment with it. But before that, the threshold will keep it like that. For this tutorial, we'll keep it at 1 and 1 ratio, but we'll go high on the input gain. So, but we're still, we might consider that it might distort. But for this instance, it didn't. So we could lower the th threshold, which is a good sign that it is coming along. Okay, now we bring in the studio verb. So always remember the the whole importance of having these slopes at your disposal. These slopes right here. This is why I like Cakewalk with. It. They did a fascinating job with Sign Two. Not even even go into the 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 inside that that this. Synthesizer, you could have ring modulation right here in the first one, assuming we don't have noise, or we do, depending on the patch we're making. And then on this one, we could have also uh, linear exponential, I mean, linear FM synthesis, linear frequency modulation synthesis. So you'll have two techniques being implemented in a one badass patch. That's what I like about Sign 2. And I didn't even go into the using the delay and the FX section. And also this over here bending and also for to make electro house or make you know your notes glide and sound different for that particular style. So yes, I recommend Partimento to make electro house. But we're not making electro house today. We're making we're just focusing on going into the past now that we have better technology and we have learned a lot. And I do apologize. I have learned a lot of stuff. I just haven't been posting because I've been busy in other things, other aspects of my life. And uh, so just make sure you follow the channel, man. You stay updated with crucial information from a real sound designer, not from a wannabe sound designer that I see a lot on YouTube. They think a the sound designer is that you get already a snare drum that's been already that's already available to you. You just use it that someone already made, and they just add. FX processing. They think that's a, 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 a sound designer. No, a sound designer is what I just, just showed you. It's, you start off with opening the synthesizer by yourself, empty, and you start moving stuff around. So that's why it's called initialize the patch. That's what I did earlier. Well, anyways, let's go back to this, man. That's another t upcoming future tutorial where I uh, I shit on these stupid young kids or older crowds that think they're badass sound designers and they're in reality they're just garbage and I'm gonna make a, a badass insight into that I'm gonna, now that I have this right now and I'm recording and I'm kind of being effective at 
I'm not using the microphone right now. I have one. I could connect it to my interface, but I'm not going to do that because I'm pretty sure you're able to hear me clearly. So now we'll go right here and open up. But that's for our upcoming uh, video session is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the, the wannabe sound designer that, that does that garbage. Uh, there's millions of them that do that. Uh, they just buy sounds and they just add FX plugins and that's it and they think that that's a sound designer. That's not a sound designer, man. I'm sorry to break your bubble, but that's not a real sound designer. Starting from right here, from the, the reverb that we're looking at, the reverb. Let's focus on the reverb up here. Right off the bat, I know that the decay time is way too far because it goes up to 20. And that's to get like tails. Way too much of a tail. So we'll go to to a prominent 70 and even then I think that's a lot but I like the fact that they have the high frequency rollout the high frequency decay and you can manipulate this whenever you're already working on the drum tone I say bring down the level a little bit to 70 percent 67 is ideal and look you got the mix at 100 percent but we want to give it dry and wet right there's a perfect little match and then we'll go up we'll go up the dial if necessary we don't want any pre-delay actually we do want a pre-delay we'll, we'll manipulate that in a bit density but right now we'll focus on this area right here though this is the most important area let's see how much it rings out if it rings out too much we'll just lower the decay time and also the room size of course i think yeah this really doesn't have any it has presets but we're not going to even go into the presets So I'm assuming that from just from standing here looking at the studio verb, you could see that from all these parameters you can manipulate into like like other how other ones have it like a small room, medium room, arena, hall, reverse, whatever. If you're able to do that, let's see what the key of C sounds like. So there you go, sounding pretty pretty blessed, pretty nice sounding. But I say that it has too much decay time. Let's lower it down a little bit and let's bring up the mix a little bit. frequency roll off we don't really want to take all of it off see if you go to 1.00 it removes all the higher end we want to keep it at I think 10 on some of the higher end and then we have the high frequency decay you want to roll off the, the high frequency decay whether it be rolling out taking it out immediately or letting it in slowly evolve well you can see how, how it's impacting the sound the overall sound of the timbre See if you go do much of a, this is a 100% pre-delay, see how it, it like it gated it in the way? That's way too much. You can actually do that to give it a little bit more uh, taste, but I, I would say be careful because then you you immediately start ruining the amplitude section of the main, of, of the strike of the, t of, the, of, the t of the snare drum. You don't want to really destroy that. And then there's motion dip, motion rate. See, I won't really mess with this just yet until you go back and you read the manual. The density, of course, we know what that means. So that's pretty cool that you're able to remove the low end just by going it, putting it at the, at the max setting at 1.00. It's like you're taking off. 20 it returns everything, the higher end spectrum. So let's go with something ideal. 10. And look, watch this long uh, delay tail. See, this is where I like uh, the technology from Cakewalk. They've been in the game for so long, I just don't, don't like what, they, what recently happened to them. 
I mean, that's whenever you start doing effects, when you go into white noise and you start manipulating using that parameter. But for this instance, we're going to go all the way to 25. So it starts sounding static. So now let's give it some uh, FX plugin of the verb. Let's wet it. So we start hearing a overall nice sounding punchy snare drum. And if you think that's, that's a, a weak sounding timber, what you do now is you just duplicate. You clone the instrument. You lower it down too because they're going to have the same parameters. Which one is this one? 9.2. And this is what you want to do if you think your drums sound too weak. You go control click to enable the blue section to uh, to have multiple uh, multiple triggers of the of the same clone instrument. And now when we play it's going to sound beefier. It might not just distort now, if I'm not mistaken, because it usually does distort whenever you play two drum tones that are duplicated to clones. So if somebody tells you, hey man, your snare drums sound weak, then this is what you do to them. See? Luckily, I didn't see too much of a... I did see some red lining over here at, at the master section by the CPU readout and the... So, so most likely, if you're still using uh, this style that I'm using, and you don't get any sound, you have to go right here and, and enable this, overwrite this, uh, it says click here to reset audio and MIDI engines. So this is cloning right here. Let's look how powerful that, that drum tone sounds. The only thing that gets me going is why in the hell did that, that, does this, does that, did that one not have the built-in FX plugins like this one? This one has three of them. Why didn't the clone instrument not include the FX plugins. That's weird. That's, that might be a little bug I'm seeing for the first time ever. I, I didn't even notice that till right now. Or maybe I stopped using Project 5 for a while that I was focusing on here is recent 11 suite. We're gonna go into the subtractor here. I also have reason 10 and reason 7 with key. They're all they're all being run in here which is not the best not the best uh, illustration. I really don't use Fruity Loop Studio 20. I have Studio 20, but I only got it to see if it threw in the, adap the adapter. And I know this reads the the rack plugin. And I still have Cubis 5 with the key, the legitimate key. And I'm able to use the uh, recent rack plugin. Maybe it's because I got the adapter from SQL 3. And now I'm able to use it as a rack plugin in this old, in this old DAW, which is very powerful right here. This guy's really powerful, really powerful. They are powerful. Even Fruit Loop Studio 20 is powerful. I just don't use it. But I got it just for that. I got it just to see if I could get the adapter and it would pop over here. But I think the adapter came from SQL 3. I'm not too sure about Cubis 5. Because this is being read in here. So, I, so let's go back to the, to the tutorial. And... Yeah, but that's weird, you know, usually when I duplicated the, the instrument, this three plugins should be all also addressed right here. They should be included right here, and I don't see them, so... So maybe that's cool, because in the, in the terms of doing this video, somehow it kept a dry tone, a dry tone clone, and then this one is wet, so it's giving it more ominous, more amplitude. Which is right there, and now I didn't clip. Look, if you pay attention up here, and up here you don't see any red. It just sounds loud because I have my speakers on. But that's it, man. So I might just close the tutorial right now. We're at 43 minutes and going. So, pretty much it, man. I'm gonna stop right here. I mean, like I said, today's tutorial was more into delving into the slope section because in the past I didn't talk about this. And the envelope generators will always have the most important uh, manipulation in any uh, construction of any drum patch or any, even a lead, a bass, whatever you're using. But this is why I like Sign 2 Synthesizer because it comes with these prominent, beautiful slopes. And now what I'm seeing too is why in hell did it have did it have it at regular? Okay, that was something else I was watching. But yeah, it's, it goes back to this right here, the decay, decay parameter. It has that. That's that's either a, uh, one can say a convex or a concave, but it is a concave. A concave. It is a uh, concave slope, if I'm not mistaken. It should be a concave slope. In fact, it should be a concave. No, I mean convex. My bad. I'm messing up again. No, I had it in my other phone. But I know it's a 
concave slope, if I'm not mistaken. But just keep that in mind. Uh, from this tutorial, you, you, I'm pretty sure it, it, helped, it helped out the most the beginners that are coming into the, the beautiful world of synthesis. There's a lot to be learned. In fact, I'm still learning. But I wanted to share the knowledge I have, so I wouldn't die with it. And and like I said, the next tutorials are going to be based on going into reason platforms and we're using subtractive to make the, the, the snare drum. We're going to talk good about it and the bad about it. But the ugly part about using Sine 2 synthesizer is the fact that it, uh, uh, the, the only problems I'm seeing is that if you don't know where those frequencies are, 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 uh, are heard, you don't know where these frequencies, according to the filter you're using, right? You could change it from the band pass to band reject, low pass, high pass, band pass, band, BR. And for this tutorial, we're at band, pa uh, we're at notch, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we're at the uh, uh, band pass. And you also have notch. But it goes back to the tutorial of what I said. Those, th those, those that I, they were discussing right now. Yep, it is a concave slope. They're either linear and exponential slopes. They're linear, but the ones that I talked about today in this tutorial are this one right here is uh, convex, convex, and the other one that I showed you where it rings out is uh, con convex. No, 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 I'm messing up. Why do I keep messing up? Um, this one that we're pointing at right here, right there, is what you call a concave slope concave slope now if you go over here at the attack portion and you change this to that one up here right here that it curves like that like a hill that that right there is a convex convex that right there is convex convex like a turtle shell so just try to remember that a turtle having a convex shell so that you know this is a turtle right here this is convex turtle has a convex structural shell so this convex we're not using that they will ring out. If anything, we'll use this one, this one right here on the attack parameter. But for this tutorial, we just kept it linear. We're not gonna use, we're not gonna go into those beautiful slopes. And the, but for this tutorial, this is where we stress out the most important sound of the actual drum tone being administered, being synthesized, and that is a concave slope. So today's tutorial, we're manipulating the concave slope. And we're at 47 minutes. So now that we discussed that, from here on, let's go preview at it through the uh, spectral analyzer, or the see where it, where it really where, where all that the fundamentals are at. Supposedly the crispiness is at 2500, where we can go and EQ. And we didn't even EQ today in this tutorial. I could have, I could have sworn if I would have added more envelope generators, I could have still manipulated the drum tone even to be more precision based, to be able to compete with the likes of uh, Sennheiser, to compete with uh, Loop Masters. Who else do I, where I go and I source some of my samples? Because I want to see who I'm challenging and who I need a, who I'm, 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 who I'm comparing my skills with, right? Just those prominent people. I don't, I don't do splice. I don't even. I'm not interested in using their, their, their stuff ever. I don't really care nothing about them. In fact, Sample Magic too. I, I don't know. I just think they sold out. Sennheiser, they're still doing their thing. I've been keeping up with them for a minute now. I like how they're doing things. They're doing things correctly. That's pretty much it, man. We're gonna close the tutorial. The beauty is that it was showing the uh, it was limit is it was uh, distorted, but yeah, we're not getting distortion right here because we this is here and up here at the main master section, master volume. We're not getting any red dips. So in reality, we're not we are not clipping. So this is a a clone snare drum, and from here you could just EQ this one, the bottom one. It's where, where where it goes to explain the the crispiness of the a finger snap, or also the snare drum, where it really, where it lies on a twenty five hundred and higher EQ. Whether you put a constant EQ or non constant to to work that snare drum, because believe it or not, 
not only will you then just have the let's go over here well it's gonna trigger that bottom one let's cancel that out and let's record and put the snare drum I'm not gonna put the 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 quantization on even though I should I'm just gonna move this to to the beginning and from here you could just play, play it back and start manipulating it in real time From here, you could just solo these two and play them back. They should be clone. They should be playing in, in uh, back to back at the in the same position. Oh, that was loud. You see, because this is how this is what I do whenever I'm making my drum tones. I always, uh, as you can tell, that see these are all other drum tones. Those are cl close hi hats. I'm not gonna preview them, but I'm just gonna keep right here. This is how I do my, my uh, drum synthesis or when I'm, when I'm doing my all my uh, my daily work is what I'm saying. But I hope that covers the... And we didn't even go into the range of LF, LF, using LFOs at your disposal, which are right here. And there's three of them and each one has uh, three mo modulation routes. One, two, three. So there's three of them. See, each one has one, two, three. 3 plus 3 plus 3 but it makes 9 then you got the polarity LFO phase the delay so it's very powerful synthesizer got the modulation effects you got a chorus, a symphonic, phaser off, and you got the delay that's off, stereo cross, ping pong left, right, center, right, left, center and we didn't even go into this, we didn't even delve into that. Oh, snap, we didn't even do that, that's right. We were supposed to even get a feel for the delay. Let's do that right now. And this one we're gonna do quarter, a quarter, we'll do one eighth on the, on the left hand side and we'll do a eighth. See how you get a feel for the, for the, the delay snare drum. And we're gonna take away off the, the looping. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> Anyways, um I didn't, have, I didn't have it said correctly that delay because the, the, the delay on the on the sign 2 synthesizer is very powerful and very uh, flavorful where it gives you a lot of uh, feel right there it was somehow being like uh, overwashed by the reverb I think which I find it hard to believe they shouldn't do that that snare drum shouldn't have been playing like that don't tell me I picked the wrong synthesizer I know the last time I, pre I was previewing the built-in delay on this guy, it was pretty cool, man. The... <laughs> yep, you see? That's what I was trying to get to. That's what I'm saying. Look how beautiful that that tone, that drum tone sounds. Now imagine importing this right here, these both of these files, and chopping off over here where it, where it necessary, right? In fact, I'll take off the I'll take off the 
right there. I'm not gonna go too 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 deep into it because then I'm gonna end up oh, I might end up wasting time. I'm kind of short on time now. Of course, I could zoom in, but I'm not gonna zoom in because I'm about to shut off the video. But I'm showing you what, the the skills and the trades of doing this correctly. For now, it, it did play correctly. Maybe it was that that the reversion, the river wasn't even put in the wrong pattern it was actually playing correctly but i think it did wash out the notes Some, somehow there was a i think a glitch because that never occurred this was the overall result i was trying to attain but that was what i was really wanted to attain that was the beautiful sound i was after i just don't understand why it sounded so mushy right now my, my studio verb in fact the will lower the decay 233 and we'll lower the, the room size to a smaller unit and we'll play it back again and see what happens there we go now we're, we're, we're touching up the correct the correct structure of the snare drum and density density mix 63 level at 50 yeah it sounds pretty good I mean now we just remove some of the high frequency of Although I also think that we could have manipulated the reverb, the reverb sits well. Sits well. It just told me that everything's done. We'll call this snare drum YouTube YouTube tutorial. And before we import this, we'll have to make sure that we're not importing any other sounds. We're just importing these guys right here. Since we have other data up here. See that's at the at the quarter. So if we carefully go up here, I already have these jotted down, they're already saved, so I could go ahead and erase this, we'll delete those, these other uh, hi-hats that, that are made from scratch. And we'll do the final export. So now, we'll take that out, because if we're having a problem now, that's another little, oh man, don't tell me it's messing up, man, come on. Oh man, before I even exported it. So there it goes. This was the other problem that I didn't think it would have happened today, man. This is the problem that why I stopped using uh, Project 5 DAW. Why is because of this right here, this behavior. So right there I lost this. I uh, most likely lost, the, lost the, the drum tone. But it doesn't matter because I have a lot of snare drums anyways that are already backed up into my external hard drive and, and they're being cloned with a Cronus true image. So this is the, the reason why I stopped using Project 5. I didn't think it was going to happen with this update because I wasn't using too many external uh, plugins. And I know I've used Isotope before on Project on Project 5 uh, 2.5 update and it wasn't like this so that was just nasty because I know it didn't save that. So if we go back and open up the pro Project 5, it's lost because I didn't even save it. I was already going to export it man, damn it. So don't let this happen to you, community. If this happened to you, see another thing you could do right now was you could connect a, an external laptop or or a phone and a, some other equipment to re recapture this as I was playing it. You could just resample that, or you just cheat it. You could cheat it and resample me like that. You wouldn't have lost the tutorial, or I wouldn't have lost the tutorial. But I'm pretty sure it it, it got removed. Yeah, I lost the the drum tone because look, I don't see it no more. It was, we were in the same project file that we were we were we were at. I think it was that isotope that caused that man somehow. Um, so that was the other reason. This is the negativity of the Project Five version environment. Well, two point five because if you use Project Five version two point zero, and you, you just use the built-in plugins, you're not gonna have any problems from my from the long history that I've been using this program. <laughs> But I'm only using it now because I'm able to use these Waves uh, plugins, the Focusrite plugins. And usually the ones that, are, that don't work too well, I usually just uh, write them down in a, 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 a data sheet or as you can call it a daily journal. And I put those plugins that are that are problematic in, the, in this environment so that in the future I won't use them again and that will happen. But it's weird because I, was, I use Isotope. Uh, 
I said to Majo before and they never did that. It just, I guess because they knew it was recording, I was giving some info techniques and some good, valuable knowledge. Cause all then it would have occurred was that I would have had the file right here. The drum tone would have been right here at my disposal. See, that's, what I, that's the only thing I was going to just show you. I would just play it back. Right, like like these, these were all like an environment of a, uh, of sign two. Those were made in Sign 2 Synthesizer. using sign 2 synthesizer ha huh, my cat saw that sound when I woke him up hey I even put Simba Phil I was trying to make a Simba and I couldn't get it so that's what I put but I, I made the Simba before As, as you can see, there goes the the work that I've done before. I mean, I still went back and, and worked on the kicks, but still, you could you see what I'm saying? Like I didn't even, because the next step to that was to to add to take it to the editor according to the, the true masters of, of drum sounds, where they state that they, that most ob obviously you will send those patches to a uh, wave editor because that's what they do to make it more prominent. Either they'll give amplitude, they'll remove dips or not, they'll give it more EQ, either attenuate or, or increase. So don't stop there, man. You, you're supposed to do that, like what I'm showing you right now. The kick will, this kick will re, 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 be re-imported in Project 5, the stock version, the 2.0, not this the green one right here, because right now, it, it, well, actually, this is a good a good version. It's the one past the blue version. The, it's actually the better version, I would say, because it gives you more uh, more stuff you can do. But there ain't no more support for it, so so you know that's the only problem right now. I didn't, I wasn't expecting it to shut down on me, you know. That's why that's why I'm kind of upset. But see, these are all kicks. Look, this is a kick made in Sign Two Synthesizer, the same synthesizer I was just showing you to make the the snare drum. See, so these need to be added with more amplitude because I just these were just factory made. They were just made, and I didn't really do no amplitude, uh, much, uh, no, no final mastering on them. So some of them sound low. And look, I even put kick release convicts so the, the viewer can see I use that slow. Because after that, you still have to go back and re-bring the, the drum tone and, and master it or try to make it ideal, really snappy or glistening or raspberry or distorted, clean or clean digital EQ models, whatever the, the, the thing you have in your mind, you know, that's up to you. But that's pretty much what you're seeing right here. Using just Sign 2 Synthesizer, I was able to make all these. So I'm still not done, but I also have more stuff right here. It's just I, oh, some of my files were removed. See? So the work is being done, it's not just being hidden, it's here to show to the world what can be done using synthesis and you don't have to rely on buying sam expensive samples from Loop Masters, uh, Sennheiser, uh, what's the other one, Sample Magic, I won't even name the other one because to me they're not even prominent in the game, they're just in there for the wrong reasons. and. So I don't buy nothing from Splice 2 or Splice, whatever the hell they think they're called. Splice, to me, that's like, that's just stupid. You might have your own opinion, but that's my opinion. And here are the snares. Look, there's a lot of snares. I think I removed some of them that I didn't really like. Still need they need a compression. I mean they need final mastering stage, like like on the 
like from a perspective of a true uh, sound uh, sound synthesis master, he will talk about that. You still gotta export it to a wave editor and give it that final polish. See, so anyways, I'm gonna cut the video. I'm already an hour. Next discussion is uh, using subtractor and reason 11 suite. So let's continue with the session. Thanks for tuning in. I'll add the other video into and cram it in into one valuable, knowledgeable video on why I like and dislike sign two and why I also like uh, subtractor and dislike subtractor for its own downfalls. And it's maybe because it doesn't have the slopes that I was just showing you in the sign two synthesizer, the concave, convex, and the linear. But let's wait for those, that video to be updated. I'll probably record that video tomorrow when I have time. Tune in. Okay, welcome back. This is DJ Skytech. This is the continuation. This is the second part for the tutorial on the talks of uh, the snare drum creation, going into depth, detail, high precision, and also discussing the reasons why I, uh, the good and also the bad things that I find with Subtractor. Why and uh, why it doesn't offer those. Uh, why it doesn't offer those those slopes that are, that Sign 2 synthesizer does have. So right now we're in the engine of Reason 11 Suite, and of course we're pulling up the the good trusty old pal Subtractor. In my usage of using him, I actually find it very useful. Very useful because the Subtractor itself is very expressive. Although it doesn't, although, although I don't really see those slopes in here, I do see a lot of different formats. And they're specific. They're specifically based. For instance, these 32s are noise variations. The 31, the 30, the 31, the 30. And you have two isolators. So this little buddy right here, I like the fact that the way it offers its its uh its synthesis methods, where you know multiplication and taking away and doing phase modulation. The, also, the theory of ring modulation. I like the fact that they, they, they describe that you have to have it to the far right, ring enable, second isolate turned on, and of course you gotta vary your, this you have to change it according to your, what you're, what you're in the, what you're in the, uh, the marketing doing. What exactly uh, drum tone are you, are you after, or what lead or what pad are you trying to device? But for instance, we'll start out with a triangle wave. Well, of course, we'll use my infamous formula, the three and the four, and we'll go to the noise. And for this one, the noise is included in the second isolator from the, from halfway to the far right. You could bring it right here is the noise. Let's see how that sounds. Well, let's put a triangle wave pitched at the same pitch right now for, for both of them. And it goes to my discussion. What I like about this guy here is the velocity section. You would have to have these, you would have to know your way around this area whenever you want to make different drum tones. Especially those other difficult ones like the the tambourine and the shaker. You're going to have to know what these, these, these do in conjunction with how you have your, this area right here set up correctly. But I did find the sweet spot with, the, with, with, with these, with the amp envelope and also the filter envelope. I did find it that even then it gets accurate, nice little readings. So of course we'll start out with the filter envelope being below the, the, the main amp envelope from the decay. So we'll lower that a little bit more. Uh, that was way too low. We'll lower this, that's at 42. We'll look at this as a 36. We're making the, the snare drum from scratch. And then you have your notch, you have your low pass, your band pass. We'll do the band pass or the notch. We won't use the low pass yet or the high pass. Although for in the sake of another tutorial, we could do that. Then you got your your other filter right here, and this is if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I read that this is a low pass, the second filter, but it has uh, main control over the first over the first filter, and then of course we we'll open up the included uh, spectral analyzer to see where we're at. We're at three. We'll put the polyphony in one mono. One voice, the low band we can deal with it later. We'll put the the range at twelve so that when we move the the band range we'll do one octave up or high or low one octave low. Assuming if we go up or down, it takes away. We'll do control click 
to put it at zero the parameters like right here we could probably do is it shift no it's not reading it it should be go it should be able to do a default keyword like it goes right here right that's the factory version where they open up the filter envelope so that and that that's according to how when you hit when you hit it with velocity and how this is formed if it's halfway all the way you have to keep that in mind but from the previous tutorial we know that we start out with a triangle wave and we'll detune to the left negative detuning and in fact we're going to go down now right here we're going to keep it at zero of course of course we could do ring modulation and uh but we're not, we haven't isolated the second isolator first let's tune that that uh white noise Put it to the far right so we won't hear the first isolator. And the color, that's self-explanatory. Notice, keep an eye on the, uh, I don't think you can see the spectra analyzer on the second monitor. Let me ring it back on the first one. Keep in mind right here in this area where it's at. See, it goes to the higher end. So we'll probably tame that to midway or 60%. The level will lower, will lower it down, the decay will bring it down a notch. We don't want it to be too too long. So now that we got that, we go back to the middle middle so we can hear out the first isolator because we're not doing ring modulation. So from this very moment, I don't really see the those slopes that I was talking about. I do see the LFO, the first LFO, the second LFO. And then the main part of the modulation envelope and then you got the inverted envelope which is really useful but there's a lot of potential to this even though i don't see those slopes that i'm looking for see if you go up here you take away all the good data and you're only left with we're at 80 100 hertz or we could say let's not chop those those frequencies so right here notch Probably I still will start right there. Oh, well, let's check it at the way at the bottom. And we could take away key tracking. But remember what I said about if you're a beginner, just leave the key tracking on. Okay. Let's give it more of that. First, let's give the isolator first more overwhelming sound and more amplitude. So we'll bring it to the left slightly. Give it a little bit of resonance. Not too much. And from here... We can start uh, going to the modulation envelope. We'll go directly to the first isolator, isolator pitch. We'll start off kind of low. And here we're going to have to discuss the importance of knowing how the decay and the tag, the sustain and release operate because they're different as opposed to other synthesizers. Of course, that's, that's the, the difference of why you're using different instruments and different algorithms based on that com mathematical computation. So right here, most of the time I would just do the decay parameter like this and I would tune slightly or high according to the pitch. If it was way, way too much pitch it's going to sound too obvious. See, we don't want that. However, if we come to the attack parameter, that might be acceptable for the snare drum. It goes to invert it. Or even invert it, you see, right there. And then we could look at the theory of we could even modulate the isolator two right here. Because isolator two is not out though it's not on, it will correspond to the white noise over here and we'll we'll increase the, the amplitude on that one. And let's not filter out too much of the noise because we want to hear its prominency. And it goes back to what I was telling you that it's never gonna it's always gonna be static it's never gonna manipulate that that white noise because it's it just you can't unless if you're using a sampler and you're putting in a imported web and then you just detune by an octave or several half oct half half increments of, of the of the of the semi parameter so it's always gonna be remain constant no matter what you do unless if you do precise uh, modulation of a uh, filtering or amplitude because amplitude modulation is the same thing as ring modulation and we're not using ring modulation today in this example. In fact, we're going to increase the 
First thing first we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the master section, we're gonna press the tab in the back and we're gonna add a usually when I when I start synthesis or when I do full tracks I always go into my effects section and I get the polarizer. It came out in the version five I think if I'm not mistaken. No version six. That's the one that it came at. That's when it, it originated, but for this instance, it actually routed it correctly. I'm surprised and shocking that it did. Look, it went right here, and then it went back up here to the main hardware routing unit and in hardware interface. So this time it is right, but it's not set correctly. We're using that a preset. And that's already a, a correct sounding timber. We'll put it in bypass. Well, we will lower the volume, the amplitude. Then right here, this is... A, uh, this has to be set correctly, not too much squashing, not too much uh, limiting, but enough amplitude. See, like that's too much squashing right here. Which is probably important once you start adding other things to it, like other uh, the compression, the reverb. We're gonna do a fairly open release, a quarter. You're gonna increase this so it won't be yellow here. It's at the yellow bit. And keep it in mono. Of course, because the tractor is so smart that it knows it's in mono only. There's only one audio in the back. As you can see, mono. Good for making mono basses, mono leads, pads. Because in the end, you don't want too much stereo. Too many instruments in the stereo field. And that's pretty much it right there. And then the trick right here will be, since it's already modulated the, the, the pitch, will be to lower the octave. You can even bring this other extra ISO uh, filter, which is a low pass, really. I will give it a resonance tweak right there. In fact, I'll probably lower this down from 48 to 30. Yeah, 30 right there, so it won't be too obvious. Give it a little bit of an oomph. Once we have that, we could bring in the low bandwidth. It does have a lot of character to it, so you keep that in mind. You won't mess with the portamento because if we did this, we're not doing electro leads or electro uh, pads. We want it to start immediately. And if we go over here, we look, we see over here that it has the amplitude attack. If you push this to the right, it's going to take a while for it to, to ring out. See? Like slowly filter in. So maybe this is their, their way of using those, those envelopes, but... Uh, this is the only way I thought so as well, you know, that maybe this is a way that they're, they're trying to tell you that, okay, this is the amplitude envelope where the main magic happens. Notice how I have it at zero, zero, decay zero, release zero. These have to be justified and correct. If not, you're never going to get the tone right. Maybe this is what they were trying to use, right? But in theory, that tells you that it would, it would uh, kind of manipulate the volume, although the amplitude is right here. This is the volume. And the filter envelope is still, we still moved it, we didn't even tweak over here. See, that would matter if we had a low pass filter and we had it set quite low, then it would, it would like uh, ring out. It would actually not ring up, but it would uh, be heard it will be heard with more of the frequency coming in and the, the resonance affecting it. So we might have to lower this down a little bit. But overall, the, the pitch envelope is right here. This is where your pitch envelope is at, isolator 1. Or you can go over here, but this modulates both isolators. And for that matter, it wouldn't even matter because isolator 1 and 2, there is nothing over here enabled. Yeah, you see, so that was another second stage pitch correction and I'm kind of liking how this is coming out so we could even detune down and we're not going to mess with the FM synthesis with velocity we're not maybe right here in the modulation envelope if you go to the far right it'll make it higher more pitchy and then vice versa you go down it'll make it lower the lower tone registry of the bass lines I'm not mistaken, I know that's what it does. Because that's the modulation envelope. Modulation envelope velocity amount. 
Then you got the phasing. Of course, we don't have phase enabled because we're not uh, multiplying it or we're not taking away or subtracting it. The mix parameter, that's, that, that's subjective. You can actually tweak it because then you will hear more of the noise. Yep, see, now, now you hear more of isolator one, just isolator one itself. See, so I won't mess with that just yet. I'll leave it right here, keep it neutral. If anything, I'm, uh, mess with the amount right here, because I'm, I'm doing a second stage of a uh, pitch modulation according to isolator one. Right there. It's pretty pro pretty cool, man. Not bad that we were able to get a a cheap snare drum quite quite in a in a in a fashion of doing it really quick. Like a, like if we're running out of time for the video tutorial, but we actually have still quite some time. We got about another additional 30 minutes into the depth into the tutorial. So that's the only the only thing and the the awesome part about the subtractor is right here you have more potential. You know, you got these parameters. Then you have this right here. And then this is different, right? This is the gate input output gate input. That's also a blessing, but you can actually make a lot of good stuff by focusing focusing on this on these parameters according to what you have set it as you flip the rack around. You have all this nice, look, you have isolator pitch, which you can also mess with. If you don't like how your drum tone is doing, hey, you could, I won't take the LFO one. I'll probably take the modulation envelope. But it's gonna sound way too higher in the pitch range, if I'm not mistaken, as soon as I trigger key of C. That's pretty cool. It opens up new new realms of sound possibilities. And where are we at? Let's look at the the initial transient. So we see that it's coming from all the way down here, all the way up here. Now if we put the X factor. It's gonna do. It's gonna get. You. It's gonna. It's gonna be easily ident. Ident. Uh, you're gonna be easily. You're gonna be able to easily identify that it's going up quite high according to when you modulate the face parameter also keep in mind not to go all the way down because if you have these set like that sometimes you'll just cancel out the, the other the other uh, uh, format but for this instance we don't have another format enabled it's off so I'll just keep it at none. We're not gonna do any phasing or any uh, ring modulation, any F and synthesis. We're not gonna do any phase modulation. Are we not gonna create thickness or whatever you want to call it? However, we have the low bandwidth on the portamento at zero. The attack has to be it has to meet the criteria of this attack right here. And if you think this is too still ring on ringing out too much, you could even lower it. That's this is the great beauty of the the subtractor that I saw as I'm doing this. Make sure that you're always higher than the filter envelope from this one, because if you do the opposite, it won't sound too right. See, and then it goes to the effects. So right there, right there, a little cheap sounding snare drum. Once that is done, we could get a traditional compressor. And right here, you know what to do. 
one will give it mid range high amplitude on that one the threshold will take away some to see some gain reduction going on And we're bringing that infamous uh, reverb. So the beauty of this synthesizer is the fact that you can tune quite well with, with these parameters here. It's just I don't really see those slopes that I'm looking for. Although the Thor synthesizer and the Maelstrom synthesizer, they do seem to have them in their interface. You just have to know how they operate. Because on the Maelstrom, they, uh, if you turn to the left, they become inverted. Those, those slopes that we, we discussed earlier. And then the Thor, I read that it had that was the word non-linear, linear exponential slopes, I think. It was pretty hard for me to find that information, but I did find it. I just don't understand why they don't they didn't put these slopes in here. <clears throat> At least in the update of Subtractor, I would really find it interesting if they're if they're able to add like an extra format, another little empty slot where they have that those slopes that I just showed you, those uh linear and exponential slopes or the concave and the convex slopes okay now let's go back to the tutorial and according to the these you could test them out but always always if you're putting it as an insert always put it below the 50 parameter or the 40 this is going to be too overwhelming and the damp it's just like a high pass filter you're just taking away the the, the the high end if you leave it like this you're leaving all that high frequency and if you go over here the damp you're removing all that high frequency mid-range data the k is self-explanatory so we'll keep it we'll keep it in this in this tutorial we'll keep it at one quarter and we'll lower the, the size of it and we're using the large room algorithm for this reverb see but the problem that i'm seeing is that you get different tastes and different feels and each one is a specific range for a specific broad sound And I know from from the from reading online, well, from the recent help tutorial, that it seems it seems to to, to uh, recommend using the small the small algorithm for drums. And then we can always tune over here the decay on this, make it a little longer. Not so long as to, you know, make it as, as to ruin the, the initial transient. And then if that doesn't get the magic flowing, you can always, of course, go over here. You don't like what's what's occurring you could always easily just initialize the patch right here reset device and here you as a send as a send effects you can get away with higher uh overall witness and it will still sound good so assuming you you have the correct box algorithm you're looking for and for this instance we're going to use the hall the hall uh algorithm with this nice RV7000 update of the MK2 reverb when it when it introduced the the convolution reverb and pre delay zero we're gonna give it a small delay diffusion we're gonna lower it to 80 you would just have to read your manual there's the early reflection level and the late at 50% zero we're not gonna mess with that and this is pretty cool you would have to enable enable these you could either attenuate or boost also with the high frequency in there that's cool they can kind of basically say yeah this we're going to remove the high frequency bands from the reverb that's cool and then the decay parameter so you can enable the eq or the gate enable uh for this this is we're going to boost even though we haven't set a a nice eq here and 
And then another thing we're going to do. Once we have that, we could probably throw in a nice little delay up here. Because that delay that it has, we're not going to use that delay. We're going to use a, a delay we're throwing in the, in the mix at 2%. Two intervals of uh, two, and we're gonna also tune this, and we we'll put this in the left image, so it's gonna be in the left, like a, a snare being pinned in the left hand. Feedback at 38%. Now that we have this guy here, we can also throw another. Shit, we could even throw a master bus compressor up here before the. Well, it doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter. Actually, I'll put back the the, the bus compressor and I'll remove this warm echo. This, even though it's a good little built-in preset, I'm gonna remove it and put the master bus compressor. And we're gonna increase the makeup. Pretty high though, it's a little bit too high, I think. So you know, always tune your 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 devices. See what see what, what what's working good for you. But right here, we're gonna give it a 0.1 threshold. We're gonna take away a little bit. So in fact, if it's too high, it, it will make up for that. Ratio is gonna be at its loudest peak. Release. Now here is the important parameter of anything. You could do auto self dependent. Let it work its own magic according to what sound it receives. So we could preview the, the, the drum tone. And we could uh, trigger the master compressor. Lower it down a little bit. And the delay. And there you could hear it being triggered now. And you could hear it playing its overall nice sound. Always take away an octave to see if you get a lower end registry. Oh, and it goes back to discussing the, the small room algorithm and also the reverb in itself. Uh, what I noticed is that on this specific little utility, well, this specific reverb and algorithm preset, you would have to actually increase more on the decay and also on the size because uh, for my usage, I noticed that they did, they, it is home specifically for drums, so... So you might have to do a little bit higher than a, as opposed to keeping it low and meeting the criteria of the decay up here. But you don't want to do it too much that it washes out the main initial the main initial transient. See, like right there, that's just garbage right there. You don't want to do that. So let's go. Let's take away. But it is sounding pretty cool. This is a synthetic snare. Let's take away from the decay parameter of the RB7 digital reverb using the small room algorithm. And the size look. the size we'll, we'll, we'll bring it down a notch and then you can experiment too with the filter slopes you know even though I said not to go with the high pass believe it or not a lot of the snare drums are created through that specific slope but it goes back to what I told you you got to find it where it really meets that that ideal sweet spot so it's not gonna sound right in that one because it's not tuned correctly so that's what I was trying to tell you the, the you the user and the beginner or the experience sound designer you always got to keep that in mind how, how where those filters are corresponding see that's the band pass and you got the low pass why isn't this thing staying on did I remove it not seeing what I was doing I apologize I always like keeping that on 
that's pretty much it. Then you can move it to the left image. Damp to leave some of that high frequency from the from the white noise, from the noise which is included right below the second isolator. Because if we put it to the far right, all you really should hear is just that, the noise. And then if, if, if uh, and I don't see the, see that's the only issue I'm seeing now. There's the mix parameter, I would have modulated that right now as to get a, a sweet spot between both of them. But over here, I'll, I don't see the mix parameter. This only uh, modulates isolator 1 and 2. And this one's not synchronized. So this one, that's the difference between LFO2 to LFO1. This one is time coded by the addition of pressing this guy right here. LFO synchronized enabled. This one doesn't have it, but you still get some good effects with the LFO2. We're not doing phase because we don't have it. We're not doing any uh, timing or, or taking away according to the synthesis we're, we're uh, carrying out. We're just using it as a subtractive synthesizer. Of course, I could have went and, and put in the other additional wave format to give it more uh, more power. So I don't see that. I do I do see amplitude. I would say come over here and tune tune the amplitude. And the last step would be to go to the second isolator. But although I wanted just to keep it simple in today's tutorial. So we'll just start modulating the LFO2 to do the amplitude. A little bit of delay, not so much because if you go too much up here you won't hear nothing. So it's like a sweet spot between from the parameters of 5, 6 all the way to 14 is when you start hearing the good the good sound, the good the good the good result you're you're seeking. And then keyboard tracking, LFO2 keyboard tracking. It goes the inverted, the filter envelope inverted. We keep that at uh, 20%. We'll open up the attack a little bit and then we'll go back to the filter envelope. This right here, I will say this right now, this is where you would actually enable this according to uh, to where you're at in the in the in the field if you're doing the symbols really you have to have this all the way like far right almost and then you have to and then it goes back to what I was saying that you have to find the, the, the correct part of, of where those filters are are attainable and where they and where they don't respond to anything and nothing is res being responsive you have to know those fine details Let's bring in a second isolator. This is where the magic happens when you start bringing in those extra isolators. And for this theory, this might stay static though. So let's put it at a two, but negative 50. Negative 50. Let's see if we even hear it. Yeah, you see? There goes that 5. That's just too, too much. We can take away. We usually would, like, decrease. But in this instance, we're actually modulating both pitches on, on both isolators. Because on the LFO1, now that I'm paying close attention, I see we're using the format. We're using the sawtooth. Cause then you have the square, you got the ramp and hold, and uh, what's the other one called? The uh, one is ramp and hold and, or sample and hold. You got the triangle, yeah, I forgot this one, what exactly it was, the Sato uh, inverted I think? <clears throat> so we are modulating both, both parameters. Let's see what happens if we do ring modulation. If we enable ring modulation, We take away from this one and then we'll multiply this one.
creeper right there, it's already uh, distorting. Even on the main master, it is distorting. So we will have to release, we have to back down on the master compressor. It's quite some. And now we go back to the, the surface, the interface of the subtractor, and we'll start tuning correctly. Sounds a little bit more better now, now that we removed the size of the, of the small room algorithm reverb. And then we'll lower down the, the channel strip, go to the right image. So not bad, not bad. Let's throw in some uh, distortion on the low bandwidth. Usually these, what I've discovered is that the, the low bandwidth help future it would actually help you bring out those drums especially when you're doing uh, the synthesis of FM when you're messing with this guy here but in order to get, obtain that we would have to put this to the far left and then enable that You could even get away and make a close hat just by uh, retuning everything, but it's, you could hear it there, you know, using the band pass. You could see what I was talking, what I was discussing earlier that right here, look how it sounds. You could get away with open hats, close hats, high hats, whatever, but once you bring it down, so now go back to the correct field of the snare, of the snare drum. That's what I was trying to tell you, the user and the producer, where you have to keep that in mind. Always look at your your your, uh, your spectrum EQ to see what you want to take out and what you want to improve upon. You see how that notch starts behaving. Probably this one. This one right here will make it seem more prominent a little bit more likable so that's what I've discovered I mean you gotta use use your your uh, you have to use your you have to use your your, uh, your utilities at your disposal and usually too what I will do is I will bring a stereo imager to see what the field is at because I know obviously the reverber already tweaked it so and then I will study this right here. It will tell me basically what I'm looking for. So if that's the case, I will open up the Spectrum EQ, the, spec the Spectra Analyzer, the, the, to see the frequencies of each individual, or the individual synthesis pat patch, to see everything that's happening in real time. So I see a lot of happening right on the 80 marker. So over here, I'm moving solo it. You won't hear anything, see? You wanna hear that white noise format. I'll leave it right here at 6,000 hertz. So then what I will do is I will remove the, make it mono. Right even this higher end look, it seems to spread open because of the, the reverb that we throw in in the, in the, in the mix is what's causing this. See, but, but now it goes back into hacking a, a close hi hat. Right there, you see? Because now we're just isolating the, the so, we're just soloing the high band. We're removing all the low end, but the low end was still responsive at the 6000 marker. 
we'll put it in normal and we'll just retune this area right here the crossover With that you have to carefully listen to it without headphones and with headphones right now i'm not wearing my headphones i'm using my monitors in the back that are behind me to dictate that sound So what I was going to do was, uh, I was going to just record the MIDI data really quick right here. Click, free click it at one, at four, one, two, three, four. And, that's, and then I will go over here and just chop to take away the snap. And you see, by taking away the snap, I'm able to go in here and, what is it? Actually, I'll, I'm forgetting this is not the Project 5 version 2.0. I've got to do it this way. Unless if I use a shortcut method. But See, that's the only issue. If you're using different sequencers, you got to always keep that in mind. And then we'll call this Subtractor 1. <clears throat> For this tutorial, I'm pleased. YouTube Tutorial Snare Drum. Oh, that's not even spelled correctly. Tutorial Snare Drum. And now we're gonna clone. Let's see if it doesn't, if it if this reason doesn't do the same bug that happened with uh, the Project 5 version 2.0 where they cloned the patch, but it didn't clone the whole thing. Please don't tell me it's because I didn't put it in the combinator. It's not gonna do it, man. Duplicate devices and tracks. No, you see, it copied it correctly. And here are the two. We'll go to right here and now we could snap snap into the bar so I'm not able to go to individual uh, increments now it's gonna go to the half because with this tutorial we'll keep it here because I, I think I'm still seeing MIDI data even though most of the information and this is another thing you keep in mind as you're playing it try to hear it where it dies out it might die out like right here, right here, right here. Sometimes it'll go to the full, past the full note, past the full bar. Because we're actually seeing here before our eyes that. So that's a bar then. I'm going to do this too. I should have done this earlier. This is time consuming here, but uh, right now we're doing the, the what we did earlier on the on the first on the first doll which was I forgot the shortcut to this man but usually this is what you want to do you just do that see how fast it was able to come all the way over here and then we'll do control plus right there and we'll come all the way over here we'll grab the end marker and we'll keep it at one bar that should have been I think that's a little bit past the bar control plus probably it right there that's the full bar right we could put the click on and right now we'll play it it should be kind of loud it might distort well I would say to retune more to keep retuning until you get your desired all the vital role is to understand how this works because I thought it would be like in the like in the sine 2 synthesizer with the decay parameter you could usually dictate the entire sound even according to how you have this. And notice I have no attack, no sustain, no release. No attack, no sustain, no release. It's the same formula. But in this theory, it's a little bit different because of the fact that it's missing those slopes that I'm after and I don't see them. Only in the matter of this right here. So this this is, goes into positive and negative modulation. All these, these you see that? Take away or give more. And, and and when you talk about the envelope generators and the LFOs and all that, you start going into something called positive modulation and negative modulation. And that's what I like about Reason here, that it has these at my disposal. Look, see those takeaway plus negative? That's, that's, what that, that's what that is. Of course, don't think just because uh, this sounded a little bit static or timid that you're not going to get expressive with the, with this because... This could go so far because I've already uh, I have a refill that I'm gonna offer to the people that are following me. Well, I'm gonna send it though, actually. 
I have a lot of refills though. I just haven't. Uh, I've, I've finished like at least about 14 of them, but I still have a lot of material that I'm finishing up right now as I'm doing this tutorial. And right now we're at uh, 44 minutes. I'm gonna start cutting it short. I'm gonna talk another additional five minutes, and then I'm just gonna shut down the tutorial. I'm gonna let you preview the the, the clone version because right now you'll get more prominency and more power just by cloning, and then later you you do what the what they recommend though, using the wave editor. <coughs> to zoom in and all that good stuff and start doing what you, what's necessary, what you see forth. So in this tutorial, we, we open up both isolators. We do, we're using uh, no FM, no ring modulation. We're using just a little bit of phase, but we're not modulating the phase at all in any of here. So it's gonna stay, it's gonna remain the same. Cause if we have put it face right here, a phase over here, then we start modulating that. You see, there's a phase right here on LFO1, where it's time synchronized, but it's not enabled. But it is plain, the LFO is plain. And then we have this over here where, where it has no LFO synchronization, LFO 2, but it does have the phase parameter. And over here too, it has the phase parameter. So three stages of phase parameter. So that's a little trick you can use. So we call this the Subtractor 1 YouTube tutorial snare, dr snare, snare drum copy. And remember to you always lower the octave down or go higher. And it did seem to copy it correctly, so I guess, uh, yep, look, it's to the far right, far right, the width is mono, mono, even though I used the delay and I used the reverb, that's what gave it a stereo field. Let's period the patch, see how it sounds, we have it on, on cycle, cycle, so it's going to loop back and forth. Of course, you can always go to the delay right there and start removing some of that tail. And we're not even using a noise gate to take advantage of removing the tail from the reverb and from the delay. Let's put that in the correct field because we were doing the right image over here. So, so far when we retuned everything, no, it's still clicking though. See, and then we could lose, we could, we could, we could use the built-in. We use the, the Spectrum EQ. And from there on, this is just where the magic happens. So, uh, they're both wet though. Both of them are using wet forms. I will have to uh, empty one out though. Mute one. And keep the first one on. And then from here, you could just use your, your slopes. See, from all this magic right here, you can start uh, tweaking over here. This is what I was trying to tell you. Go to the 2300 marker, which is up here. Put it at 258, we'll boost. And for this matter, we're going to put a non... We're going to put a constant Q to keep it thin. And at the bottom, we're going to go over here where so much of the energy was at 80. No, that was from the previous tutorial. This one changed to 275. We go to 275 on this one. Contrary to what we're doing, now we're going to boost a lot right here. We're not using the bail parameters because this, this turns them into parametric EQ, 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 parametric EQ, which is still solid and very useful. What was it? Did I say 280? Yes, I did. Let's go to 270. And I think on this one you can shift, right? Or control shift. No, never mind. It was it was one of those where you can get finer tuning to get to 270, but we we'll just stop that there. And
Okay, so that actually... The master compressor seems to be, be being too pushed too much. So we'll lower down the master compressor, the makeup gain to like the acceptable honor rule 4.0. So that seemed to, to solve the equation. As soon as I brought the second one, it, it seemed to... Uh, This is just simple, all you do is just retune, retune to your liking. And that's that. Tune in.